Hi, I'm Sam Mims with Centaur, and I'm wearing my sequential shirt today because we're going to dive into a Prophet 5 and install a really cool new product from Analog Renaissance. This is it. It's called the Rev-1, and what that name refers to is that you can take your Rev-3 Prophet 5, back it up a version, and get the sound of a Rev-2. Now, as you probably know, the Rev-2s are highly coveted because they sound so fat and so big. And the reason for that was because they used SSM filter chips. In the Rev-3s, they changed over to Curtis filter chips that sounded great, but not as great. And so with this new product, you can get the sound of a Rev-2. You can still have all the great features of the Rev-3. Some have MIDI, etc. And so you can get the best of both worlds with this. To open the Prophet 5, first remove the four Phillips screws at the top edge of the back panel. With the four screws removed from the back panel of the Prophet 5, now it's time to flip this over and get to the bottom panel where we can take out a bunch more screws. The problem here is all of these knobs poking up. Uh, those can easily get knocked and then you can break the shaft of the potentiometer itself. That will be a catastrophe, so don't do that. Uh, instead, find a good work surface that's soft. Uh, it can be a bed, it can be a couch, uh, you can use a workbench uh, that has a layer of soft towels on it or a packing blanket. I'm going to pull out my handy dandy foam blocks and we'll just lay those out and then lay the face of the profit onto those. Next, use a flat screwdriver to remove all the slotted screws all around the edge of the bottom panel. Then, there are two additional Phillips screws to remove. Now, at this point, the northern hemisphere will separate from the southern hemisphere, so we need to hold this together carefully and get this back into a right side up position. With the Prophet 5 open, you'll find the voice board to the far right, and you'll notice rows of identical ICs. Each row has five ICs, one for each of the five voices. This tallest row here is the filter chips, CEM3320s. You'll need a chip puller tool, which can hook under each end of the chip, allowing you to pull it straight up and out without bending the pins or damaging the chip. You might need to gently bend the yellow capacitors over a bit to make room. The five filter chips are being replaced by the Rev-1 kit, but don't throw them out. They're quite rare these days, and they're used in a number of other vintage synthesizers. This straight line of solder points along the bottom edge of the board is the plus and minus 15 volt power rail. And this is where you'll need to solder the one wire to the Rev-1 board. The solder point just at the lower left corner of the filter chip socket is a minus 15 volt point. You can test it with a voltmeter to make sure you're on the correct point. So here's the ground lug here. We'll just put our black lead there and we'll test the solder point down at the bottom here on the 15 volt rail. And you can see we're at minus 14.97. We're pretty close there. Then simply solder the black Rev-1 wire to this point. Then plug the Rev-1 board into the empty chip sockets. 
Be sure all of the pins line up with the sockets. You don't want to bend any under. Position the board in place, then start at the bottom and work it into the sockets. Once all the pins are in the right places, press firmly up and down the PC board to get it fully seated. Here's the switch assembly, and to mount this, we want to slide the wiring through the top of the uh, pitch bend panel here. So we send it through there. There's a three pin connector here and then two loose single pins. We want to put the three pin connector on first with the brown wire all the way to the right. Just slides on the top connector there. And then we just slide the other two on. Doesn't matter which goes where on the remaining two pins. And there it is. You can use double-sided scotch tape to secure the switch assembly to the back of the bender panel. I've removed some screws from underneath the panel to get a little bit more room to work. Once the switch assembly is positioned correctly, you can use a small flat screwdriver or something similar to press it down securely. The Rev-1 kit adds two switches to the Profit 5 and they install in a completely non-destructive way over the pitch bin panel. On the left, you can select between the standard four-pole filter setting or you can also have the option to select a two-pole filter. On the right is a switch to add Q compensation to the filter. Normally when the filter resonance or Q is set to high levels, the bass frequencies in the sound drop significantly. Analog Renaissance built in circuitry to compensate for this, and it can make a huge difference, which you'll hear shortly. The first setting of the switch is the normal Profit 5 filter. The middle setting adds a medium degree of Q compensation, and the third setting adds full Q compensation. Now with the Profit 5 back together, let's see what kind of sounds we can make with this. Okay, here's a normal Profit 5 patch. And now I'm going to switch the filter from the standard Profit 5's four pole filter to the two pole setting. So you can hear what difference that makes. Okay, here's a great patch to demonstrate the uh, Q compensation on the uh, Profit 5 with the Rev-1 inside. Here's the standard Profit sound. Nice resonant filter sweep. Now let's kick in Q compensation to the first setting and hear how the bass level changes. Now let's kick it on full blast. And finally, let's kick in the two-pole filter. Quite a difference. Here's the uh, standard profit sound. And two-pole with full Q compensation. Big and beefy. So there it is, the Rev-1 from Analog Renaissance. You can order that now from Centaur for your Profit 5 Rev-3, and you can turn the sound of your Rev-3 into that big beefy sound of a Rev-2.